Welcome Modern Tactical Shooting. In this video, I want to go over M855A1, the Army's green bullet. Did it live up to its hype of being a more accurate and deadlier bullet during the latter half of the years in Afghanistan, warranting the over 10 years of development and estimated $100 million that it went into this round? I'm going to cover its performance as I saw it during my years at SF. I had access to M855A1, and I'm going to go over some testing I did for DefenseReview.com. That's what this video is based on. A roll-up of two articles I did on the performance and issues with M855A1. So let's get into it. Now, M855A1, known as the Enhanced Performance Round or EPR Round, was listed by the Army as coming out in 2010. Really, I didn't see it being issued until mid-2011. It was actually sent downrange to combat soldiers deployed in Afghanistan first before it was issued stateside. Now, of course, M855A1, the difference between that and the older M855 green tip, is M855A1 has a steel tip, uh, a steel core surrounded by a copper jacket and a copper slug. M855 green tip has a copper jacket, a lead slug, and a steel penetrator inside. They both weigh about 62 grains. Now, to get the lethality up to that of M855 green tip, they actually jacked up the pressures inside M855A1 to about 10,000 pounds of PSI short of a proof round, which is 70,000 PSI. That's the pressure they, that they test M4s and M16s. That's the rate at which they can handle internal pressure before they fail. The pressures of M855A1 is around 62,000 PSI. Compare that to M855, the older green tip, where the pressure is around 52,000 PSI, and one would think this would lead to some problems, but I'll get into that uh, later on in this video. Now I'm gonna say the bottom line up front, the Army wanted a green bullet, and that's a lead-free round that would be less toxic to the soil on military ranges, and this was a priority uh, with lethality and effectiveness coming second. That's kind of a spoiler, but once we get into the data and performance, I think you're going to see that the Army got what they wanted. They wanted a green bullet. They got that, but I don't think the performance was necessarily there with this round. Now, in the development of M855, the Project Manager's Office for Small Arms Ammunition for the Army, Picatinny Arsenal, and Aberdeen Proving Grounds, if you look at the early days when M855A1 first came out, there's a few things you're going to hear over and over again, and you're going to see over and over again in the literature, and that is match-like accuracy and increased barrier penetration, specifically on car doors and light skin metal type targets. Uh, that's great if you're getting attacked by car doors, but uh, that's not necessarily the case in Afghanistan. And again, they talk about match-like accuracy, but I think what I'll show in my findings is that M855A1 is actually far from uh, match-like accuracy. Now, when looking at M855A1, or actually looking at any bullet, there's three categories that I have in my mind, and this is just, just Jeff Gerwitz, you know. If I was going to replace the main bullet that the Army uses, M855 green tip, I would have three categories, and the bullet that I chose would have to outperform the original bullet in at least one of these three categories. Two would be good. Uh, the first category being accuracy. Second category being terminal performance. That, of course, is what happens, what does the bullet do once it enters a target. And the third would be armor penetration. We're not talking about barrier penetration. We're talking about actual body armor penetration. So I would want a bullet that outperforms the current round or the previous round in at least one of those areas. Two would be good. So looking at accuracy, before I go into M855A1 and my testing results, let's take a look back at M855. Now, M855 was developed for the M16A2, and the original requirements, as far as I can tell, looking at older documents, is the Army's 
acceptable accuracy for the M16A2 with green tip or M855 is a 6.8 inch group at 600 yards. Now, of course, that's a pretty lofty idea and basically that's all hopes and dreams to get just over a minute of angle at 600 yards with green tip. But alternatively, the Army said a 1.8 inch group at 200 yards in an indoor range. And actually that's pretty feasible. Uh, in an indoor range with no weather effects, uh, mounting the rifle in a mechanical rest so it has no shooter influence or shooter error, I can see M855, the old 62 grain green tip, shooting 1.8 inches at 200 yards all day long in 10 round groups. And from my experience of 26 years in the military, I joined the Army in 1990, uh, and you know I saw a green tip throughout my entire career up until the very end. I can tell you from experience, on average, I have an M4A1 out of M16. Most soldiers get about two and a half to just under three MOA with M855. That's pretty consistent. So when you factor in an outdoor range with the effects of weather and shooter error, or I would say uh, the differences between shooters, two and a half to just under three MOA is pretty good as actual real accuracy with M855. What I find perplexing about accuracy at M855A1, I can't find any published army data on the actual MOA capability of the ammunition. It's only, again, listed as match-like over and over again. The Marines, that SOSET round or SOST round, however you pronounce the acronym of the Mark 318 ammo that the Marines wanted to use, that had published data of two MOA accuracy. The old Mark 262 ammo that we used for the Mark 12 SPR rifle, I carried one for a while, that has published data of 0.77 MOA out of a Mark 12, but again, nothing on uh, M855A1. So when talking accuracy with M855A1, you'll never see, or I haven't found any information, the exact MOA capability at a certain range with M855A1. Picatinny Arsenal, uh, Aberdeen Proving Grounds, they all say it has match-like uh, accuracy. There's a video from a gentleman from, I believe, Aberdeen Proving Grounds. He's shooting an NRA match. He says the same thing, match-like accuracy, but he doesn't actually go into the MOA capability of the ammo. Uh, and there's a few slideshows uh, floating around on the open source internet. And the closest thing where they talk about actual inch or MOA accuracy is they mention how the AMU, two AMU shooters with ACOGs, four power ACOGs, shooting up to 400 yards, the ammo vastly outperformed M855. Now, if you look at this picture here, you can see their group and it measures uh, about six to eight inches, which is pretty good on a 400 yard target. But if you actually look into the slideshow by the PM manager's office for ammunition, they also talk about M855A1 having the capability to get 95% of its shots on an 8x8 eight eight inch plate at 600 yards. And I think that was that's all hopes and dreams. If you look at what these uh, AMU guys did, they basically put a 6 to 8 inch group on a target at 400 yards. And you're telling me that uh, somebody can shoot M855A1 and get 95% of their hits on an 8 inch target at 600 yards. That's just over one MOA in accuracy. And you'll, as you'll see from my data, I don't think uh, M855A1 uh, is close to that in terms of its capability and accuracy. And that's the key. It's repeated over and over again uh, that it has match-like accuracy. To me, match-like is one MOA or under, and I think any precision long-distance shooter, PRS, uh, NRA bullseye, I think they would all agree that to be match-like, it has to have uh, one MOA or better in its accuracy. And the only military round for M4s and M16s that actually has that capability is the Mark 262 77 grain ammo, which out of a Mark 12 SPR, again, can get just under one MOA. And from my use, uh, I see on average about one and a half MOA out of an M4A1, out to about four or 500 yards, it can maintain that. So that's not too bad. So just how does M855A1 stack up? Well, for the testing I did, I basically used a clone of my work gun that I carried in 2015 Afghanistan. Now at the time when I did this testing, uh, this barrel was brand new on the rifle. This is a Colt SOCOM heavy barrel. 
And when I did the testing for accuracy with the M855A1 against M855, this barrel had about 200 rounds on it. So this is a very pristine barrel I did for the testing. I shot this rifle supported on a rest, running a six power VCOG, so trying to give myself the best chance at doing some tight groups. Now, due to the limited ammo availability that I had with M855A1, I only did five round groups, so you can say there's not very scientific testing, but uh, I wanna go over the data that I have. Uh, it did beat M855, but not by much. Let's go over the numbers right now. So I used USPSA targets and I used five by seven index cards and I shot multiple strings of fire from 100 yards out to 500 uh, yards with both M855 and M855A1. Now, shooting out to 300 yards, uh, M855 was an average of three MOA. And if you look on my first string at 500 yards using M855, uh, the stars were aligned and the gods were in my favor. And I actually shot a 0.8 MOA which is pretty good, but I think that's a fluke. And on my second string, I shot a 3.8. So at 500 yards, M855 averaged 2.3 MOA. Now I shot more strings with M855A1 just because that was the unknown. I used to shooting M855, I just wanted to get an average. And shooting out to 500 yards, you can see the data there. First string was 2.4, then another 2.4, so pretty consistent. And then my best string, third string, I shot a 1.8. 8.4, uh, which is pretty good. And that average is out to uh, 2.21 MOA at 500 yards. Now you compare that to M855 and the difference is 0.28 MOA. So yes, M855A1 is better, but you know, what do you consider is really better? Uh, for me, a 0.28 is kind of marginal. Yes, it flies a little bit better, but it's not astronomically better. And there's nowhere near the capability of Mark 262, that 77 grain, a true match grade bullet. And if we look back at M855, the original spec out of NM16A2 was a 1.8 inch group at 200 yards. Uh, M855A1 can do that easily. Uh, but again, is it a great uh, improvement over M855 with that M855A1? I would say not really. It's uh, somewhat of an improvement, but again, not a huge uh, difference between the accuracy of those two rounds. Now let's talk about terminal performance. That is what a bullet does when it enters the target. Now on humans, if you look at the data that they put out, uh, again, that's the PM for small arms ammunition, Picatinny Arsenal, Aberdeen Proving Grounds. Really, there's no difference between M855A1 and M855, especially at CQB distance. You're gonna ice pick the target, the bullet's gonna zip right through. And of course, shot placement is key. I've seen one shot stops with green tip, uh, but again, that is good shot placement. Heart shots, spine shots, and head shots get the job done. M855, the older green tip, and the modern A5, or 855A1, they both suffer from the, the same lack of capability that the old 55 grain M193 ball uh, that we used in Vietnam, and that was the 55 grain ammo. Of course, does a yaw, a turn in the body, uh, greatly improving the tissue damage of that round. That's what really gave the first batch of 5.56, the stuff used in Vietnam up through the 70s, a lot of lethality, is that yaw in the body. The Russians have their 5.45 round, which retains that yaw. The Afghans called it the stinging death round uh, because 5.45 is super lightweight round, a lot of velocity behind it, so it maintains that yaw when it hits a target. And of course, again, that yaw creates more tissue damage, uh, putting the target down faster. So uh, terminal effects, really not much difference between M855A1 and M855. Again, the military ex expressed how great it was at punching through car doors and light skin metal. Now, I did not see M855A1 until my 2012 Afghanistan deployment. That was my first tour in Afghanistan. And again, the Army released M855A1 Around the middle of 2011, it went straight to Afghanistan for use by our combat uh, soldiers downrange in Afghanistan. I arrived in Afghanistan, I believe it was January of 2012. We got M855A1, and actually the first thing we did do it is we grabbed some uh, metal plates 
the same uh, metal. I forget the thickness of it. It wasn't that thick. The same hard metal that we used to armor up Humvees and stuff. We went out to the range and we shot it at 25 yards. Here's an original picture. On the left is M855. You see it's smashing against the metal and breaking apart. The center round is the old black tip armor piercing ammo. And on the far right is M855A1. And when you compare it to the older black tip armor piercing, you really can't tell the difference between the rounds. So indeed, M855A1 can tear some metal up and it can go through some barriers, but it's kind of a moot point because in Afghanistan, again, you're not being attacked by car doors. The enemy is not armoring up with light-skinned metal vehicles, uh, kind of like how they were in Iraq. Uh, barrier penetration is really, can it go through uh, walls in those villages and walls in the clots, those Afghan houses? And let me tell you, on average, those walls were two to three feet thick of homemade concrete. Uh, they used, they lived in mud huts with mud walls and they made up their own concrete mixture. And I don't care what round you have, unless it's a 50 cal armor piercing, it's not going through their three foot thick walls. They're basically concrete. So increased barrier penetration, again, re really was pretty meaningless in Afghanistan because a bullet didn't have enough barrier penetration to go through any Afghan walls, interior or exterior, on most occasions. Because again, the walls are on average one to feet, uh, three feet thick. So again, it's a moot point with the barrier penetration. So performance-wise on threats, really no difference between the older M855 Green Tip and M855A1. And my third criteria, will it defeat body armor? M855A1 does not defeat Russian and Chinese body armor, or not that I'm aware of. And to me, I think that's a failure. Now, some might say during our time in Afghanistan, we weren't really taking on adversaries in body armor. True, a majority of the enemy did not wear body armor in Iraq and Afghanistan. Yes, there was some body armor up uh, enemy. And of course, now that we've left Afghanistan, we've left thousands upon thousands of level four plates sitting around for the Taliban to use. So people say, okay, the enemy really isn't wearing body armor, so what's the big deal? I look at it this way. If they were going to spend millions upon millions of dollars on, on a new bullet, thinking about future threats, not just Afghanistan, but the next wars that America might have to fight, you know, body armor is becoming the standard as we see uh, playing out in real world events. Uh, Chinese and body armor is just getting more and more prevalent. You'd think if they were going to spend all this money and they wanted this round to be the, the future bullet, it would have some body armor penetrating capability, but alas, it does not. Now here is a fun fact about M855A1. It was sent uh, for downrange combat use first. Again, uh, mid 2011 is when it was sent off to Afghanistan. I saw it in Afghanistan, my first deployment in 2012. Now it did not hit stateside army bases. It hit Fort Bragg, I would say late 2013. Early 2014 is when M855A1 replaced M855 ammo and we got it issued for training. And uh, let me talk about a giant boondoggle or bamboozling by the army. You think when they did all this testing on the round, they would test all its true capabilities and limitations. Uh, that was not the case. We got issued the ammo and because of the increased barrier penetration, the ability to punch through car doors and tear up metal, which it does, uh, come to find out uh, in third special forces group, we couldn't use the ammo in the shoot houses because it would prematurely tear up the walls in the house and ruin the walls uh, much quicker than what they wanted. And you can't use it on still targets because it does tear up some AR-500 uh, and it will prematurely wear your still targets out. So we got issued this ammo as our training ammo. Lo and behold, we can't use it in CQB. We can't use it in long distance training. So two thirds of our training that we wanted to use this ammo in, we couldn't train with it. Uh, we were limited to basically shooting paper targets out in the flat range. So our 18 Bravos, our weapon sergeants, uh, the first six months that we had M855A1 issued to us because there was no other ammo, they were scrambling uh, at Fort Bragg to wheel and deal and find the older M193 ball and M855 uh, just to have ammo to train within shoot houses and do long range training and some other stuff where basically M855A1 would just tear things up. So there was about a six month gap from the time it was issued at Fort Bragg, replaced M855 to the Army, realized their mistake that they had an ammo that they can't use in a lot of training, and they had to get M855, the older green tip, back into the system. 
again, uh, talk about having no uh, foresight into the ammo you're about to issue in training at military bases, that you can't use it in the shoot houses that you operate. That was, to me, that was just plain silly. So I think by the middle of 2014, towards the end of 2014, we had M855 back in the system and M193 ball back into the system just so we could train with it in our shoot houses and long range training. Because again, you can't use M855A1 because it would just tear up stuff too much. Now with the stateside rollout of M855A1, there were some notable instances of some issues with the ammo. One I think was really overblown. It raced through the internet like wildfire, and that is M855A1, because of its steel tip, will tear up the feed ramps inside of an M4A1. And evidence of this was some photos passed around of a damaged M4 from the 82nd Airborne, where you see that the feed ramps and the barrel extension is all torn up. But really, if you look at this photo here, the parts of the feed ramp that are torn up is actually below the feed ramp where the barrel extension meets with the receiver and it's actually really low bullet strikes in the upper receiver of the rifle. And really that's not an uh, M855A1 issue, that's a bad magazine issue. Uh, I think whoever's running that rifle had some magazines, ray magazine with some bent damaged feed lips or follower or something like that causing those really low bullet strikes below the actual feed ramps. So I don't think that was an M855A1 issue at all. I think that was a bad mag issue. But this raced around the military and online as a issue that, hey, M855A1 is tearing up feed ramps. Along with this picture here, this is some broken teeth in the barrel extension. Now I've seen broken teeth like this before from bo uh, broken bolts. It's not just M855A1 that can break a bolt. I've seen broken bolts with M855. Face it, uh, bolts can only take so many rounds and I've seen bolts break. I've had a bolt break on me in one deployment. Luckily it happened training on the flat range prior to a mission and not, uh, not out on a mission. But when a bolt breaks, sometimes it will make one or two or a couple rounds with a broken bolt, but that broken bolt, as it's cycling those rounds and chambering, it will start tearing up the teeth inside their barrel extension and that's what you get right here. So I don't think this is M855 in a direct result of M855A1. Now it might have made the bolt break a little early in its life, but that bolt was probably on its last legs anyways. But it was because of this limited reporting of feed ramp damage, the Army had a knee-jerk reaction and they didn't want this to be a big issue. So they came out with a brand new magazine that would allow the nose of the M855A1 round to engage the feed ramp a little bit higher up in the M4. So they came out with this improved magazine, tan magazine with the blue follower. Basically, they changed the angle of the feed lips and the follower uh, to allow the nose of the round, again, to engage the feed ramps a little bit higher up. And it does a pretty good job of that. If you check out this photo here, you can indeed see the nose of the round engaging higher up on the feed ramp than the uh, Army magazine with the tan follower and the green follower. Uh, but there is one issue with this magazine. One, I never saw this being issued at all. Uh, even after I retired, I was calling back to buddies uh, Fort Bragg to see if they ever saw these. They never saw them. You can find these online for sale here and there. But this magazine here I used for about six months. That's because after six months it stopped working. During the time I was using it, I kept it loaded all the time. I shot this two or three times a month. I probably put around 1,500 rounds through it and it started to have feeding issues, so it went into the uh, do not use bin. So I don't have a lot of faith in this magazine. That's probably why it never made it to Big Army issue, is it just doesn't outperform the other magazines. And the Marines, of course, they went with a PMAG uh, for reliability. Checking out the photos here, the PMAG does a pretty good job of allowing the nose of the round to engage the feed ramp in the M4 pretty high. In SF, our, we used unit funds to buy these. We had thousands of PMAGs in 3rd Special Forces Group, so uh, aluminum GI mags didn't get used a lot anyways. So in terms of M855A1 tearing up guns faster, I didn't see it up until the time I retired in late 2016. I never saw damaged feed ramps. Again, I think that was just a one-off from a bad magazine, but it went around the Army and around the world 
like wildfire via the internet that uh, this ammo was ruining feed ramps. I don't think it's so. I didn't see an increase in bolting, uh, broken bolts and things like that. I don't know if the Army was tracking it. If there is an increase, again, I only saw this, the sample size within my unit and we're small teams within Special Forces. Now, barrel life and barrel wear, that's a different story. The Army actually kind of pulled a fast one with regards to barrel life. The M4A1, its barrel life was considered good if it can shoot between a 3.4 to four inch group at 100 yards. And sometime in the middle of the 2000s, that standard was changed to anything under a five inch group at 100 yards. There's a video by Anison Army Depot. I'll put a link down in the description where they talk about they'll take anything under a five inch group at 100 yards. That's pretty dismal. So if the gun shoots a 4.99 inch group, uh, you're telling me that's good for combat. 4.99 inch group, that means if you're shooting a 300 meter target, you can shoot up to almost a 15 inch group. Uh, and the average person is 19 inches wide at the shoulder. 15 inch group, you could miss the, the threat just because a gun can't shoot tight enough. And to me, that's completely dismal. And I think the change, basically an increase of one MOA uh, difference between the old standard and the new standard, is just to prolong the life of the barrel because obviously training up for combat, we go through a ton of rounds. Down range, you go through a ton of rounds. So you can easily wear out a barrel in a year or two easily. And I think they change the standard just to get a little bit more life out of these barrels. I would never go into combat with a gun that shoots uh, a five inch group at 100 yards. Uh, again, to me, I'll take anything two and a half to three at the most. Uh, that's what I would want. Now, that's why I ran Mark 262, that 77 grain match ammo down range. I have an M4A1 with a 14 and a half inch barrel. You can get an inch and a half group uh, at distance all day long with that ammo. We did it in training. Uh, we'd shoot out to 600 yards and we would consistently see a 12 inch group and under, which we were running four power scopes, uh, not the most stable of positions. That's pretty damn good. Uh, and I would take that all day long. M855A1, uh, nowhere near that same performance level. So to answer the question, did M855A1 live up to the hype of it was a more accurate, more lethal bullet? I would say no. Uh, accuracy, yes, a minor improvement. Lethality, really the same as M855. Of course, you can go through some car doors like a, like a fiend, but uh, until you get attacked by car doors, is not that big of an issue. Uh, in terms of service life, you know, we adopted the M855 around 1985 with the adoption of the M16A2. We used that up till 2011 when it was replaced by M855A1, so about 26 years. Compare that to M855A1, we adopted it around 2011, and it's set to be replaced with the 6.8 arc round uh, in 2024. So about a 13 year service life as a primary round, that's half the service life of M855. So was it a good investment? I don't really think so. And again, uh, really not that much increase in performance. Personally, I prefer Mark 262. I want that uh, 1 L MOA capability. I want all the accuracy I can get out of a bullet if I'm going into combat. Now, real quick for my thoughts on the NGSW program and that 6.8 bullet. I was interviewed by the YouTube channel Practical Accuracy. I'll put a link down in the description. And again, it's my thoughts on the coming uh, rifle and bullet. So there it is. Uh, my thoughts on M855A1's performance over the years. Thankfully, you know, being in Special Forces, I got to choose what ammunition I carried in the combat. I was not happy with how M855A1 performed. I carried Mark 262 77 grain ammo on two of my three Iraq deployments and all three of my Afghanistan deployments. I always wanted to give myself the best chance of hitting the enemy. And that Mark 262 77 grain bullet is a true match capable bullet out of the right rifle. With an M4A1, you can hit under two MOA all day long, and that's what I wanted. But hopefully, like always, you found this video entertaining and informative. And as always, I'm Jeff Gerwich. Thanks for watching.